Before I start the video, I just want to go back to some of my first videos where I said if I can't find original items, I'll always try and find, before I buy replicas, I always try and find military issue items, but from later dates that look the same. And this is a classic point, in, you know, this is a classic example. These items here on this uniform, they're all dated from the 1950s. They are genuine Russian army issue, but from the 50s. Trying to find this kind of thing from the from the Second World War is very difficult, almost impossible. So that's why, because I'm just saying that because I do get comments on my videos sometimes that people say, oh, they're the wrong laces on the boots and the slings the wrong way around, that kind of thing. But, you know, I'm not trying to make everything perfect. I'm just trying to show people, like newcomers really, what things would have looked like. Anyway, and we start, these are the felt over boots. These are called Valenki. And it would be almost impossible to find any of these surviving after 80 years. And then, like, unlike the, the Germans, the Russians were well prepared for the harsh winters out there. So they had these over boots and then they had these trousers, these thick padded trousers. They're called Vatniki. Then we've got the jacket, that's called a Telegraika. Now when I bought these, I bought the jacket, the trousers and the boots from an army surplus store in, actually in Russia for about seven or eight years ago. They were unissued and but dated 1950s and they look almost the same as Second World War but when they came they had a slight green tinge to the material so what I did, I filled a large tub full of water and half a bottle of bleach in it, put in the jacket and the trousers weighted them down with bricks so they'd stay under the water and left them overnight and when I, when I pulled them out the next day they came out like this like a much better colour for them, what they would have looked like in the Second World War but like I say, they're not original, they're from the 1950s then they would have the belt and on the side of the belt there's a canvas case there that's a spare magazine for the machine gun and the machine gun, that's the PPSH-41 that had a 71 round drum magazine very popular that was and even the the, if the Germans captured them, they would use them as well. well. This particular one is actually a replica. It's not one of those Denix ones. There's no makers on it. It's a really good one. And it's when I bought it, it was aged, and it looked, you know, looks, looks the part. And I think around five million of those were made during the war. Then we go up to the helmet. Now that again, that's dated inside 1948. But if you look at the chin straps, they're held on with rivets. And I do believe that if if they held on with rivets, their Second World War, post-war, they were stitched on. So it looks like it's been, in fact, 1948, after the war had finished, it's been refurbished to be used again. This is the helmet. If you look inside, it's dated 1948 there. And those, the three liner pads, they all seem slightly different. And that's got there, the rivets there. So I do believe that, you know, if, it's, if there's rivets in there, that's from the Second World War. Later on, they were stitched. But I'm not certain about that. You never know with these things. But it's obviously been refurbished at some time. It's in good, good condition. In 1940, the Russians and the Germans had a pact together. They were going to invade Poland from both sides and split the country between them. And when Russia captured their part, they rounded up 22,000 Polish officers, teachers, police, all sorts of people, and executed them. It was a, a mass genocide, really. And a lot of the Polish officers, they were buried in a mass grave in Katyn Wood, that's near Smolensk in Western Russia. And the Germans found the grave in 1942. But the Russians denied it was them. They said it was the Germans had done it. And the, the Russians denied that till 1990, when a, an investigation was set up. 
and in the end they did actually admit it, it was them that had done it but they said what they said was that the or most of the perpetrators who had done it would be dead by now so there was nothing they could do about it and so basically they got away with it this is the machine gun as i said it, it is a replica and i bought this at uh, the military fair at stonley from a dealer it was already aged and it had this sling on um, the sling looks original to me from the Second World War. It's different than you see on the post-war model. So I think the sling is original from the Second World War. This is an original magazine for the machine gun. It could be post-war, but it is an original one. And it's quite a heavy thing that, even though it's empty, so it'd be quite heavy when it was full. Got a 71 rounds in there. Everything on this uniform is original from World War Two. There's just the entrenching chill on the back that I'm not too sure of. Now when the Germans were marching through Russia, when they got to the first winter they found they, they weren't really well equipped. They didn't have any proper winter clothing on the first winter. This type of equipment only came in later. These are some special leather and felt boots. Then you've got the quilted thick padded trousers if you look on the left leg there's a patch there that looks like it's been done during the war time it's been there a long time then we've got the quilted jacket as well i bought the jacket and the trousers from the military auctions at ratisbons in germany if ever you want anything german uniforms and equipment that's the best place to look out for their auctions I mean, it's a bit expensive now with the you have to pay VAT on the item and customs duty when they come in this country but they've got some incredible things there and then he's also he's just got the usual leather belt and metal buckle and the three ammunition pouches and the shoulder straps now this particular type of quilted uniform was mainly issued to the Luftwaffe you see a lot of photographs of paratroopers wearing these, but I've only, I haven't got a paratrooper's helmet with a snow camouflage on. I haven't got a, a, an original paratrooper at all, actually. But I have got this, just an ordinary steel helmet with a white camouflage, so that's what that's on. But you do see a lot of this type of quilted uniform worn by the German paratroopers. Around the back we've got the usual bread bag, that's for keeping the soldiers personal bits of equipment in and the aluminium mess tin and the water canteen. Now this this is the, the entrenching tool, it's a folding entrenching tool. Now I always thought that the Americans came out with this folding entrenching tool first. Up until then Germany and America they had fixed, fixed handle entrenching tools but apparently in 1941 the Germans introduced this. The Americans didn't just copy the idea in 1943, but this is the only item I'm not sure about whether it's original or not. It could be post-war, but it's very difficult to tell. I'm not too sure about that. On the 22nd of June 1941, Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa. That was the invasion of Russia. Now, they thought it was going to be, you know, about over quite quick. 
they didn't rate the Russian army very well and <laughs> didn't turn out to be quite what they thought. And on the 17th of July 1942, the Germans got to Stalingrad and laid siege to it. But that dragged on till the 2nd of February 1943. There's some grim fighting there. And at the end, the Germans had to surrender. And over 90,000 prisoners, German prisoners, were taken. And they were marched off to prison and labour camps all over Russia and worked till they dropped. And at the end of the war, only 6,000 of those soldiers ever returned back to Germany. <laughs>